All right, everybody. I'm doing a rare later night shoot here and the van and uh, a couple more significant updates. As you guys can see up here, I've actually started putting in the cedar planking. Uh, now this cedar planking, with the exception of that middle board where the lights are mounted, is not finished uh, with any finish. It's just the bare wood right now. Um, but this cedar planking will dominate the interior of this camper, meaning uh, all of these walls will be cedar planked. The front faces for this uh, for the bed slash seating platform area. Um, all of the cabinetry around here in the bathroom. Uh, so the cedar planking is going to be a uh, significant theme in here. And this is a little sneak peek of what it will look like. And uh, I'm quite pleased. So uh, what we have here is this is just a cedar planking. This is just a fence pickets I was telling you guys about. Uh, plane down a half an inch. Um, I will do a little bit of finishing sanding, but for the most part, I want to leave this planking kind of in its natural state. So it's going to have some striations from the planer and so forth. Uh, and I'm also going to use a little bit of a different finish. I'm going to use a water-based polyurethane on this as opposed to that uh, oil wax finish I used. Um, just a little pro tip on that water-based poly. When you're using it on particularly soft or light-colored woods, the water-based polyurethane is nice because it will not yellow the wood as much as an oil-based wood. Um, it, it'll actually do a pretty good job of keeping it in its natural state. Um, it's a little hard to see here, but the, that center plank where the lights are coming out of, I did uh, pre-apply some uh, uh, some of that water-based poly just to see how it took. Plus, it was easier <coughs> to apply it now as opposed to <coughs> excuse me as opposed to trying to apply it when uh, I had the lights up there. But um, so coming along well. Uh, it's a tedious, long process, but I have to admit the uh, the roof actually came together really well. Uh, two other significant developments, though. Um, so in the last video, I had talked about how I had most of the plumbing installed and all of that kind of stuff. Well, what I've done since is I've actually finished up the plumbing. So let's take a look down here. You guys can see um, I uh, brought that plumbing up from here over uh, and there is the shower valve. Of course, it's just in place now. I'll remove it later. This is going to be the water supply to the toilet. Um, uh, I decided not to uh, uh, plumb that one in right now with the fitting because uh, I don't have the pan in and um, I just capped it off for now when I tested the system. Uh, but other than that, everything else in the plumbing system is complete. And uh, I uh, pressurized it. Um, this was the first time I'd used PEX. Uh, though it was really easy to put together and I didn't have any specific concerns, you just never know. Uh, but there was no leaks. Uh, well, there was one leak. Ironically enough, uh, this, uh, this little cap right here is intended for capping off just just for this purpose capping off fittings that aren't in place yet to test the system and that actually leaked a little bit but uh, obviously that's just a test cap so when i tightened it down it was fine but all the plumbing system worked um so every system in here has now been tested the water heater i fired that up got hot water that ran real well uh though i had tested the furnace before i actually had bought uh the old, I, I bought an updated um, digital thermostat, hooked up the wires, tested that. So the uh, furnace is coming on and off appropriately. That's working properly. Plumbing was tested, as we talked about. I had tested the uh, drain system, but I confirmed it and got everything hooked up. So the drain system into the gray water tank is working. Uh, all the gas lines seem to be fine. Um, 
Got the water tank in, the pumps working. Obviously, I've got the uh, pump switch is just temporary right now. I'll put it in uh, more permanently once I build out this kitchen face. So, um, in short, all of the RV systems work. Um, obviously, I got some of the uh, lights plugged in here. There's still a few accessories, like a couple fans up there that I'll need to plug in. I'm not going to do that right now. But I did test all that stuff before. It all works. So... Um, you know, the, from a system perspective, the only real thing I need to do in the future is just when I get that pan button down, but, uh, that's kind of mechanical fittings. But other than that, everything else is working. That may not seem like a big development, but I will tell you, uh, especially for me doing this my first time, getting all of these RV systems in place, either installing them new or in the case of the furnace, uh, installing new sensors and everything, uh, has been quite a task uh, you always run into little problems here and there, but uh, which I have in, in these various circumstances. But everything's resolved, everything's running, and now we're into, you know, starting to make this thing look like a real camper inside. Uh, another update that I did here is the, uh, the bed platform area. Um, so what we did is got these parts in, got the piano hinges in there. Uh, so this right here will be a storage area. I'll put some carpet or something down in there and make it look nice and neat in a little bit. Uh, but that's, you know, that's a pretty hefty amount of storage down in there. Uh, this piece right here is fixed, but this piece comes up so you could uh, service or work on some of your electronics here. And of course, like I talked about before, this uh, the little tray that... Uh, um, all these parts ship in if i ever had to i could also pull that whole tray out um i still got to cut the uh, little flap up door here that will go up here there's that piano hinge back there and then over on this side this access door lifts up so you could service uh the water here and the furnace or any plumbing that you need to down there and then of course over here, uh, this this comes up also. Um, you have the little breaker down there for the shore power and some gas and plumbing lines and another part of the uh, the furnace there. Little tip here: um, when I built all of this, I mean it was a lot of extra work to put all these little doors and everything on there. But I did want to make sure because this this front face will be all sheathed up with uh, planks and so forth. I did want to make sure that uh, um, I would be able to uh, reach and service any of these parts that I need to. So a little extra work, but I think it'll pay dividends. Um, and then there was, you know, I, I can't remember if I talked about this, but when building out the framing and a lot of this, there was a lot of places like right there where I put little notes um, in case I forget in the future. Um, I had some concerns about if I had to take out that furnace and repair it, if I'd be able to get it out. So I did things. I added, I didn't put any glue on that piece and I made a little note on there. That way, if I, if I ever had to repair it and I had to pull that out, I think I've got about two or three ways that I think I could pull that furnace out if I had to. Um, but, you know, food for thought, uh, this is a pretty complex camper in terms of all the various systems in place because I wanted to maintain all those traditional RV systems like we talked about. Uh, but it's important, you know, some of that stuff will break down or you might need to do adjustments or repairs in the future. And it's important to think about that. Um, up here, um, I believe I, in the last video, you guys saw uh, all of the uh, sink and everything. Uh, tight quarters. Uh, this will be, you know, this will all be closed up in here. So it'll be a little bit tighter in here. But uh, this uh, this particular stove included this little pull-up part here. I debated as to whether included or not, but I went ahead and decided to put it in there. Um, but I like this little stove. Uh, it's the first time I've actually installed a stove as opposed to just having a uh, standalone uh, stove top. It's nice. Got in a little faucet here. Um, this is just uh, all residential stuff. Uh, this was obviously RV specific, but the sink and the faucet here, uh, that's all residential. So if it ever never needed to be repaired or replaced, you can just go down to your local home store. Um, uh, all of the ABS for the drain and stuff, that's all. I had to make a few modifications to fit the sink. That's all 
residential stuff, all the PEC stuff. So the nice thing is, though this is an RV, um, I, I think a lot of the residential stuff is a little bit higher quality. And it's, uh, you know, if I had to make a repair, you could just come down and get it. Um, but uh, there's a few RV specific things here and there. But for the most part, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, lights, if you guys were wondering about those. Um, this is uh, this has a different uh, trim on it here, but this is the style I use. I really like these. Uh, they call them a flush mount. So basically all you have to do is just drill a little hole to run your wires through. Of course, all the wiring up in there is all tucked up underneath the uh, planking there. You can see a little bit of where it come down for the switches. Uh, but these are easy to install. Uh, they are not completely recessed, but it's, uh, I don't know, that's probably less than half inch thick. So it's, it's acceptable to me. Uh, this particular... Uh, color tone is warm um, uh, I'm a little concerned that maybe it's not enough light in here um, in that back there will actually be a second light I just don't have it hooked up I'll wait till I get some of the uh, planking structure in place uh, but I do like the warm I, I can't quite describe why it just gives it well a little bit more of a warm and less harsh look in here uh, usually you can get these LED lights in a warm or a cool they call it, I think, a cool white or something. Cool white is fine, but it's a little bit, uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit more of like a fluorescent light. Um, I think some of these will come in a third variation. I think they call it natural, um, but they seem to be less common. So, but this is fine. I'll, I might just add, like I said, a few more lights, but, uh, but yeah, guys, it's coming along. A uh, little channel update uh, with the holidays coming up. I've had quite a few companies reach out to me, um, want me to pr help promote some of their products. Obviously, it's all stuff that I think would be relevant to the audience. So just as a heads up, you guys might see, um, you know, a few more uh, of those ads uh, or those videos coming out for various reviews and stuff like that. Um, I think they're good products. Uh, like I've talked about before, um, if you don't want to watch that stuff, just don't watch it. And if you do, you do, you know, so that's that simple. Uh, it'll probably slow down after the new year. So just bear with me, though. Um, I got some exciting stuff. Got some cool flashlights, uh, some pretty neat solar panels, and a couple of good deals on some lithium iron phosphate batteries. So thanks, guys, for watching. Let me know what you think. And uh, I think from this point on, every update video will have a little bit more progress than the one before. And it'll look like we're making some... Uh, Good move. So thanks, guys.